Hello, and welcome to our online worship for this Sunday, July 21st, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and I welcome you from across the diocese and further afield as we enter into this time of worship. The diocese ministers on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasetwatin, Dakani, Sakani, Cree, and Donizha, along with Meti, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. So please come and join us and reflect on the reading, sing the hymns, and pray the prayers. May we pray. Holy God of Israel, draw us near to you, so that in place of hostility there may be peace, in place of loneliness, compassion, in place of aimlessness, direction, in the place of sickness, healing, through Christ Jesus, in whom you draw near to us. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Jesus has sent out the disciples, giving them the authority over evil forces in people. By telling the story of John the Baptist's death, Mark has told that discipleship does have its risk. After proclaiming repentance and curing the sick, the disciples now return. The word of the, the, word, the Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they have done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place by yourselves and reset a while. For many were coming and going. They had no leisure even to eat, and they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd 
and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land and Genseret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed a rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick onto the mat sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went into villages or cities or farms they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and who touched it were healed the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. I have to say, this Gospel reading today is one of those ones that hits me hard, partly because in Mark's Gospel, the bulk of Jesus' interactions are one-on-one. -on -one. And this is one of two occasions, or sorry, these are two occasions within the Gospel that we've sandwiched together, uh, cutting out the middle story, uh, that talk about Jesus and the crowds. There is no subtlety, no um, secrecy about who Jesus is and what he's about at this moment. He's out in the world doing incredible things. And more importantly, the disciples have become the apostles because Jesus has sent them out. Disciples means followers. Apostles means those who are sent out. So Jesus has sent them out into the world and they've come back. And the healing and the teaching that Jesus was doing, the apostles are now doing. And people are coming in. And it is an intense thing. And Jesus sees the wear that's having on the apostles. So he says, come away. Let us go to a deserted place. And they get in the boat and they head off. But they're recognized, they're seen, they're witnessed. And not in the social media kind of frenzy of a way, but in that organic, you know, word of mouth way of old. And they are followed to where they land. It's interesting that we're not told where they're going. It doesn't seem to be a specific destination, but just to go away. And they try to, and they fail, and yet here we are, the disciples are, are um, you know, sorry, the apostles and Jesus are there, and the crowd comes to them again. And they conti Jesus continues in the good work that he has begun. There are several things that strike me about this reading. The first is, there need, there, we need to plan breaks. And right now, a good number of the clergy on the diocese are on vacation and taking a time of rest, and it is a great thing. Parishes slow down a bit in the summertime, and people are able to take a rest, and that is excellent because we need to step out and step away. Now, for the, the apostles and Jesus, it's a very short boat ride that they get. And sometimes micro breaks are a, an important part of our holy habits of taking a moment to make a cup of tea and to sit and enjoy that cup of, just focusing on that moment and being present in that moment. Other times, we'll be going for a walk in nature. I'm a big fan of saying 30 minutes of walking every day. Now, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes continuous. We might need to break that up uh, early on or do what I do and the, do the 9K every day. And it's, it's restorative and healthy. And so while the Apostles and Jesus don't get a long break, they do get a break. And they get away in the boat. So there's something there, I think. There's also great guilt on my part, having not had a clergy conference in a few years, that it's time that we bring the clergy together and have that break, and to be able to come together and to share and come away. The other part that amazes me in this reading is Jesus' attitude. There is no hint that Jesus is frustrated or annoyed, that there's nothing other than deep compassion for the people. They're like sheep without a shepherd. 
And you can imagine in most other cases and places, there could be some annoyance about the crowds, the crowds, but Jesus isn't there. It is all about caring for those who are in front of him and having a deep compassion. And I think about how Jesus was able to carry on and to minister to those who were in front of him, even though he knew the apostles needed a break, but the people were desperate. And so he cares for them. The, minis- the mission and ministry that he has continues on, and it is kind of exciting. Although we know the trajectory he's on, he's heading to Jerusalem. And we can see how the crowds are building and the people are surging forward to sort of say, here is a holy one. And the rumors and the gossip and all that around the promised land are now, you know, taking on an even bigger uh, volume because people are hunting him down and they're kind of stalking him in the wilderness to, to be present with him. And he's seeing how desperate people are. I think about the world we live in, especially Northern BC, which is the most pluralistic part of Canada with the largest number of people who have no religious expression. And they are chasing after all sorts of other things. The cathedral now hosts a recovery group, which is exciting. And there are other churches in the diocese that have recovery groups, that have food banks, soup kitchens, thrift shops, that try to meet those needs that people have that are physical, that are emotional. And Sunday by Sunday, we gather in parishes and during you know, the school year, we have discipleship programs, hopefully Sunday schools in some places, to be able to address the spiritual needs people have. But it's that, that inner longing. St. Augustine wrote that our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. And people are searching for things, and Augustine knew about searching for things and going off after unhealthy um, things. But here we have this, this acknowledgement that people are like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus is our great shepherd. We celebrated that on the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we were reminded of that constantly about how Jesus is wanting to lead us into the right pathways. It's not always easy because sometimes that means saying no to something. And I know that saying no is not an easy thing for a lot of people. We have been conditioned to not say no. But no is an important part of life. It sets a clear boundary. But we also get to say yes. We get to say yes to where God wants to take us. And I find it amazing how some people, when it comes to God, really struggle with saying yes. Sitting on the Board of Governors for the Vancouver School of Theology and having conversations with seminaries across Canada, I find it really amazing where somebody will come and say, I have a call to ordained ministry, but it has to happen this way. I was talking with somebody who had a 20 block radius from their home that they were prepared to minister God's grace in, but they were not prepared to move beyond that. The apostles moved further afield. There's rumors that Thomas ended up in India. That's further afield. And it is not always an easy space. Now, don't get me wrong, locally raised up, clergy, very important, and I think part of the future of the church in the remote parts of the country, indeed. Parts of that have been lived out for generations in Caledonia and throughout the Council of the North. And it'll become part, I think, more of life in urban centers as well, especially when we think of people being bivocational and having a day job and doing the church on the side and having very specific ministries within the church. It is important to stop and say, what is God calling us to do and how can we say yes? And to sit with what God is calling us to do regularly and asking what it is that we can do in these moments and these times to advance the kingdom of God and to say our yes. Yeah, that'll mean saying no to some things. 
Those probably are good and healthy things to say no to. Sometimes it'll be disappointing and frustrating, but the yes will have so much more blessing and possibility to it that sometimes we can't even ask or imagine what God is going to do in those moments. So when I look at this reading today, I see a call. A call to make sure that we take time away, that we power down for a few moments. And even if it's just a short time and doing a micro relaxation habit, some box breathing, some self-care of walking, or just enjoying a cup of tea undistracted. Having times of prayer, devotion, opening up scriptures, and looking at God's word, looking to see what God is going to say to us, but also saying no to some things and saying yes when God calls us and asks us to do something. Not knowing where it'll land, not knowing where it'll lead, but knowing that God has prepared a way and God has gone before us and will continue to bless us. So I pray this week that you may have time to look at what God is calling you to do and take some time. Amen. Our offertory hymn is, Blessed are the pure in heart. Let us confess our baptismal faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of the people. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. We pray for the church universal today, especially remember, especially remembering Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda Nichols, our primate, Chris Harper, our National Indigenous Anglican Archbishop, Lynn McNaughton, our Metropolitan, David Lehman, our Bishop, and for the Diocese Administrative 
Assistant Camilla Gossam, Finance Manager Teresa Kennedy, ACW President Dorcas Stewart. We pray for those who ha- have asked us to pray for them and for those on our hearts and minds. For Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selflessness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation of your greater praise and that all may share the good things that you provide. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all of those who give their energy or skill to to the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free to all who are bound by fear and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, God of power, and through the ministry of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb that we may desire as the fullness of life, and proclaim your saving deeds to all the world. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language closest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our worship today, and thank you for your tithe offerings in support of your local congregations and for all the people that help bring these services together week by week. Thank you to Connor, who did the reading and prayers this week, as he's stepping in and doing some more around the cathedral, doing midday prayers. Midday prayer is offered on the Cathedral Facebook page, Monday through Saturday at 12.15. And if you're in the area, pop in, the doors are open. And then nightly at 9 p.m. on the DOS Facebook page, you'll find me, Mon- uh, every night except Sun- Tuesday when it's Reverend Ken Alton, uh, leading Compline. In all things, may you know of God's abiding grace and love. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. Our concluding hymn is Lift High the Cross.
Let us go forth following Jesus. Thanks be to God.